Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we're going to talk about best venomous snakes to start with. There is no such thing as a good starting venomous snake, okay? Let me, let me say that first and foremost. I'm trying to find the best way to really phrase that because there is no great way to phrase that without making it sound like, ooh, there's good venomous snakes. I mean, all snakes are beautiful, all snakes are wonderful, but there is no good starting venomous snake. I don't care what it is. But we're going to get into some of the ones that can be a little bit easier to deal with or less dangerous uh, versus more dangerous in the grand scope of things, okay? Before we get into that, right in that bottom corner right there, right down there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. We appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. Let's get right into this. All right, so let's talk about venomous snakes. First and foremost, there is no such thing as a good venomous snake. There are beautiful venomous snakes, amazing venomous snakes, but no such thing for a human keeper as a good venomous snake, okay? It's not like playing with a ball python, a boa constrictor, a corn snake, a milk snake, a rat snake, a king snake, and the list goes on and on and on, okay? Good is a relative term, but I want to make sure that we understand there is no such thing as a good starting venomous snake, okay? This whole idea of people putting up videos of, hey, the best starter venomous snakes, or these are good starting venomous snakes, there is no such thing, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about some that are actually less venomous, that's not considered classified as hots, as we would call them. Venomous in the reptile world would mean hot. We would call them a hot snake. Uh, you know, it's on fire, sets you on fire, definitely sets you on fire if you bite, get bit by one. However, at the same time, there are some that's not classified as hots, but are still venomous. I'm going to talk about those as well, at least some of them. I'm not going to talk about every single species, but we're going to talk about some of them. Now, when we start talking about a beginning venomous keeper, first and foremost, the first thing I want to say is you should work with somebody before you ever start keeping venomous snakes. That's just a smart thing to do. Now, granted, I can't say whether they're good or not. We have the only legitimate, okay, I'm going to say legitimate training course in North Carolina, one of the only a couple on the whole eastern seaboard. Been doing it for 12 plus years now. And it is awesome. We have a great amount of fun doing it. And it's not just venomous handling. We go over all kinds of things, laws, first aid, medical issues in reptiles, and also it includes venomous handling and dealing with and working with venomous snakes. It used to only be closed off to only professionals, law enforcement, uh, military, zoos, vets, things like that. We opened it up to the public about three years ago for the keepers, uh, not just venomous keepers, but also for any kind of reptilian keeper because a a lot of folks are interested in knowing how to care better for their animals or if something's going on how can I deal with it if I don't have a vet in my area so that was one of the big things about opening it up more to the public for public keepers is giving them information to give them a helping hand before they have to go seeking out a vet sometimes multiple counties uh, multiple counties away because there's not always a good exotic vet a lot of people see exotics but I don't mean they know squat about how to actually treat them they know what they get out of it which is the money okay now let's be clear so when we get back to the venomous snakes, there is no such thing as a good venomous snake. A venomous snake is still a venomous snake. It can hurt you badly. It can give you an insane hospital bills. It can cause permanent damage to your body outwardly as well as internally. So there is no such thing as a good venomous snake when it comes to keeping. And allowing yourself to cross lines or somebody allowing themselves to cross lines is absolutely stupid, okay? Understand that a lot of these people online that do all this free handling and stuff, they're just a statistic waiting to happen. Don't care who they are. Nothing personal. I personally like my body. I don't like doctors. I don't really think there's too many good, you know, just legit doctors out there that's for their patients. Most of them is about money, and most of them is about pharmaceutical kickback. So if you really want to go paying for their next house or car or whatever, more power to you. Go ahead. Free handle away. Um, enjoy your nice bills as they come. I'll put up one right here. You see this bill right here? This bill, the one that says Pharmakai, that would have been anti-venom for example, okay? And then if you had to take a, uh, a helicopter ride, that would have been an additional thirty to $40,000 just 
for whatever that little helicopter ride is. So, you know, if you enjoy just giving your money away, go ahead, free handle away. Um, otherwise, I think they're awesome. Again, we work with these animals and have been for years. Absolutely love venomous snakes. But we also understand that these are still wild animals. And they absolutely can hurt us. And they can hurt us very badly. All right, so some of the non-human, lethal, or dangerous venomous snakes that really are not classified as hot snakes, of course, are ones like the hognose snake, the Asian vine snake, the mangrove snake. Also, I have to I'll point something out here on the mangrove snake, and I'm, I'm going to point something else out uh, in just a minute, but also the false water cobra would be classified as not necessarily super dangerous to any human being unless for some reason you just had an allergic reaction to a bite. Most of them are rear fanged, okay? So they have fangs in the back. So it's hard for them to even get around the appendage to begin with. Now let me make something else clear. One of the things that I absolutely love, and we, we most of us, especially here at our zoo, uh, or folks that, that we work with, you go to an expo or you go out here and these guys start rattling off all the Latin names of it, we start laughing. They're trying to look important by giving those scientific Latin names, and the only time the Latin name is important when it comes to a snake is literally inside of the venomous snake only when it comes to the anti-venom. Giving the Latin name to all these different snakes is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It's just people trying to sound more important than they really are, okay? So understand, if you're going to talk about the venomous snake, give the English name so people actually understand what you're talking about and they don't have to go looking it up on Google because nobody's impressed just because you can give the Latin name to anything, okay? Now, with that being said, I will go back in kind of defense of one statement that I made before. Four, the mangrove snake, Dendrophilia, okay, understand there's several snakes known as the mangrove. So if we go in and we say the man, just the mangrove snake, okay, which one are we talking about? The mangrove viper, the mangrove snake? And there's several that's considered mangrove or classified as a mangrove snake, okay? So understand when it comes to an envenomation, that is the only time that really and truly the Latin name is important because in the English terminology, there may be the same classification for several different species of snakes. And so so understanding which different species that is so that treatment is proper and given in the correct form for the correct bite if it were to occur. Okay. Now, otherwise, just say the freaking English name. It's not complicated. Okay. <laughs> I just, I can't. <laughs> this is not a laboratory. And inside of an expo is not a laboratory. All that crotellus de trucks and all that junk is not freaking necessary. It's a freaking rattlesnake. It's a copperhead. It's a cotton mouth. It's, you know, I mean, it's not complicated, okay? English uh, for folks that just don't know the Latin names to it, okay? Now, understand as we start talking about legitimate venomous snakes, there are some that would are better to start with and i'm going to say this they're not good remember the term good is is just throw that word out the window that are better to start with i dare say the word easier because nothing is easy when it can hurt you okay but there are some that can hurt you or very little chance of it killing you and then there's some that absolutely can put you down like my girl right here the eastern green mamba okay so understand this that there are levels of danger now we're going to say that's also relative because levels of danger could be a copperhead there's more bites by the copperhead inside the united states than any other snake within inside of the united states a year however there's never a death due to the copperhead bite so when we start talking relative terms okay the copperhead is one that would absolutely be a great starting venomous snake. One that you would start working with, start learning how to do what you do as a venomous keeper with a copperhead. However, the chance of getting bit may actually be much greater because, again, understand, copperheads are responsible for more bites throughout the U.S. than any other venomous snake in the U.S. So what do we classify as good? Well, that's now a relative term. Well, I won't die, but there's a good chance I'm going to get hit, all right? So understand. Then you have something like, and I'm not saying this is one of those good starter ones, but for example, use a Gaboon Viper, for example. They will lay in wait and, and just sit in the same place. They'll sit in the same place so long, they'll kill the grass in the place that they're laying for ambush. And they're super, super tolerant of a lot of things that happen. They can get walked on, they can get kicked. A lot of the times they'll just huff and puff, but you never know when all of a sudden he's just gonna have that bad moment and bam! And that Gaboon Viper can lay you out, okay? So understand there are going to be, in what we consider relative terms, good snakes versus your extremely dangerous snakes, or better, let's say better snakes, better to deal with 
And when I say better, meaning it's not as dangerous to you, it's not going to lay you out, not going to put you in a casket. You know, there's there's just some things that's not going to happen. You may give you you may have a bad day if you got nailed by it, but it's just not going to lay you out. So the copperhead would obviously be one of those. That's one that a lot of folks start off with. Okay, the copperhead is one of those that does. I dare say the word make a better starting venomous snake for a starting venomous reptile keeper. Another one would be the eyelash viper. Okay, The eyelash viper, and I say that in relative terms because they can be kind of hard to get established in just in captivity. If you've got somebody that's breeding them and they've already got them established in eating and things like that, eyelash vipers do great. But they're relatively relatively, okay, I say the word relatively, non-toxic, okay? Things like squams, people bring those in all the time, which would be called the Atheris squamata for all of our little science-y, uh, want to throw out Latin names for everything, just like the Eastern Green Mamba would be considered the Augustuseps, uh, the Dendraspis Augustuseps. All right, so again, if you really want to try and sound important, go ahead and spit out the Latin names or, or do your best to spit out those Latin names. It's absolutely hilarious. It's not, not necessary. Eastern Green Mamba, the West African Green Bush Viper. Okay. Now, again, we're talking about the eyelash viper. Now, again, women absolutely tend to love the eyelash vipers because they have the eyelashes over the top of their eyes, kind of like this guy right here. Now, understand these are absolutely beautiful. A lot of your tree vipers, a lot of your smaller tree vipers, do tend to be on the less toxic side of the spectrum. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get hurt. And understand, I want you to understand something. Venom is a high level of protein. So it's not a poison. There is a big difference. I don't get bent out of shape. Some, some of these idiots in, in our industry, it's not poisonous, it's venomous. You know, get, grow up, man. Give an education, don't be a dick. Um, with that being said, understand there is a difference between poison and venom. Venom directly has to go into the bloodstream, but also our bodies can, it's what's called metabolism. Our bodies can utilize or dispel protein. It's just a toxic level of protein. So understand when some people get bit by a copperhead, sometimes they have absolutely nothing at all happen to them. Sometimes they'll have pain, they'll have swelling, they may have nausea, uh, they may have a necrotic effect, necrosis. There's several things that can happen or none at all. So understand usually when poison, when something gets poisoned, it, it, everybody just kind of reacts almost the exact same way. There's the reaction from the poison and that's, that's that. But with a venom, with a venom injection, it could be several different things or none at all, one, the other, or something else. So there's several things that can happen with inside of an envenomation. So understand that just because somebody gets nailed doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, well, I got bit by the copperhead. No, you know, they're, I haven't heard of anybody dying, so I'm good. No, go seek help because you could have allergic reaction, you could have necrotic effect, something like that could happen. And that's also the things you need to bear in mind, which is also why it's super important to not just go haphazardly working with venomous snakes and take a chance on getting nailed. Because some people that have gotten nailed and taken the antivenom uh, injections now become allergic to the antivenom itself. It's essentially venom turned against itself. It's meant to stop venom from doing any more damage. It's not going to create or, or it's not going to correct damage that's already done. That's going to take time and healing and your body recovering. But antivenom is only meant to just stop venom in its tracks from doing any worse damage to a human's body, externally or internally. Okay. Now there's other ones. Now we talked about the false water cobra. It is a great for cobras. It is a great starter one. Generally speaking, when most people People start with cobras, they start with the monocle cobra. The monocle cobra is about on the copperhead end of the elapid world, okay? There are low toxic level elapids, but can still put a hurting on you. You still would have to have treatment, you still would have to seek medical attention. But it's not quite like going this route or the king cobra or the forest cobra or some of those more dangerous spitting cobras like the Mozambique and, and species like that that actually have a seriously potent toxin with inside of their venomous bite. So understand that there, again, that's why I go back to, and the whole point of making this video is not to try and help folks necessarily go, oh, okay, yeah, this is, you know, this, hey, man, this is a great starting venomous snake. No, there is no such thing as a good venomous snake. I love them all, and they're absolutely amazing, but that's a difference between loving them and going, oh, come here, ooh, yeah, I can hold you, you know, kind of concept. No, you can't. That's not a smart idea. Um, and, 
if you're not experienced with keeping these things, there is no such thing as a good starter venomous snake because they all can put a hurting on you unless it's the ones that's literally not considered venomous inside of the human world like the hog nose, like the Asian vine snake, and some of the absolute what we would consider low toxic to no toxic when it comes to human species. All right. Now, Hopefully this has been helpful. I know I haven't really given a lot of the species out there that uh, would, would make good ones. There are some, I dare say the word, semi-laid-back rattlesnakes. The copperhead, the cottonmouth absolutely is not a good one to start off with. They're pretty nasty. Um, the gaboon viper tends to be very, very tolerant, but all of a sudden when they finally have had enough, it's game over. They're dangerous. So understand just do your research just into the species, okay? And the best thing I can say is get started with working with somebody that has experience working with these kind of animals. If you're interested in our course, you're more than welcome to, uh, uh, to get in touch with us. Happy to, happy to uh, help out in any way that we can. But we just want to make sure that folks understand that while, yes, absolutely, it's a lot of fun and very, very rewarding keeping different venomous snakes. It's not a game and there is no such thing as a good starter venomous snake. They all present their own sets of challenges and their own sets of equal, uh, equal circumstances that can create problems with inside of the habitat and with inside of the keeping and handling uh, portions of the reptile keepers world. All right. Now, hopefully this has been helpful. We appreciate you coming along week after week after week. We got a couple of more episodes coming up from some folks that have wrote us in and looking for us to do videos on some topics. Continue to feel free to write in and we will try and get to those as fast as we can. Make sure to check out our TikTok channel under Reptile Rangers. Also the Instagram page at Kernersville Reptile Zoo. Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. Make sure to uh, hit that subscribe button, like button, the bell for notification. Feel free to write us in and let us know of other things you want us to film about again. And our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us. We do have uh, the storefront. We sell pets quite often and food and stuff for the pets. So if you're interested in a reptilian pet, arachnid pet, uh, amphibian pet, feel free and get with us. Happy to help you out in any way that we can. Now, We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.